السلام عليكم زكري السلام عليكم توفيق وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته سيدي Good to see you both. Thank you. Yes, Let me begin by saying uh, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful, I would like to welcome you all to this class. This is class number one uh, this trimester and it is ITKI 6102, Ijtihad, Renewal and Modernity in Contemporary Islamic Thought. I am happy that uh, we have uh, Zikri and Tawfiq joined us and Rafiq and Razida. Welcome all to uh, this class on Saturday, 17 June 2023. And this is the summer trimester from June to August 2023 for IKI Academy, Institute of Knowledge Integration. And I am your instructor, Dr. Omar Al-Talib, and we will be together on this journey of knowledge and learning and benefiting from each other. So we are all students and we are all uh, in a process of gaining knowledge and benefiting from each other. And that is why I encourage and I am happy when you provide your comments and feedback and questions and criticisms and concerns throughout our lectures. Uh, I don't mind, uh, I encourage you to interrupt me, to raise your hand, uh, to uh, speak your mind, uh, nothing you can say is uh, wrong. Uh, it is a sharing experience. And you can also write in the comments section, uh, which is also encouraged. <laughs> and if you have any technical problems with your connection or your uh, internet or with uh, Google Meet, please let us know so that we can improve and also uh, make the technology better. Also, I am recording these sessions, so you can uh, listen to this lecture on YouTube, uh, on my channel, and I have provided the link in our Telegram group. So with that, I want to uh, begin by welcoming all of you and uh, sharing with you my happiness and joy uh, at having you uh, in this class uh, in, during this time together for two hours uh, for sharing and learning and benefiting uh, and <clears throat> asking the difficult questions. Uh, I do not speak for all professors. I only speak for myself. Uh, I know some professors prefer that uh, maybe you just listen to the lecture. Uh, I prefer that in addition to listening, you respond. Uh, I want to hear from you questions uh, and uh, inquiries uh, and anything that comes to your mind, even if it is not directly uh, related to your class. Uh, instead of being upset, I am happy when you ask me tough questions, difficult questions, hard questions. I may not know the answer. I will be the first to admit that I am ignorant on many topics. And if I don't know something, I will say uh, I don't know. And if I know something, I will share uh, what knowledge our Creator, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, has given me. Uh, there are many topics that I have deep knowledge of, and there are many topics that you uh, have much more knowledge than me. Uh, and that is why uh, it is to everybody's benefit uh, for you to uh, share what you have. I wish I could know what is inside your head. Uh, I do not have that ability. So it is uh, your job, your responsibility, uh, your initiative that will let us know what you are thinking, uh, what you are contemplating, uh, what uh, you, uh, how you are processing the information uh, that uh, this class is addressing. Also, I want to mention uh, that uh, I myself, I am a sociologist. 
Uh, I was born in Iraq. Uh, I come from a city called Mosul. Uh, and so the city of Mosul is composed of many types of people, uh, Arab-speaking people and Kurdish-speaking people and Turkish-speaking people and old Assyrian language uh, speaking people uh, and people from different faiths, Muslims, Jews, uh, Christians, Yazidis, uh, and all kinds of uh, backgrounds and ethnicities uh, and cultures uh, and languages. <clears throat> so, although my family is Arab uh, and also Turkish mixed in, uh, but uh, my background is uh, made up of a variety of uh, different uh, cultures and uh, different people. But I grew up in the United States, so all my education most of my education is in the United States. I did a study in Saudi Arabia for four years when I was in middle school, so I was able to learn uh, many of the Islamic study subjects uh, like Quran and Tafsir and Fiqh and Tawheed and Hadith. And also I have had the opportunity in my life to teach in the United States and in Malaysia and in the United Arab Emirates. So it's such a blessing to meet and to greet and to interact with students from around the world. Uh, and since I studied my PhD in sociology, so that is my specialty. I'm not uh, a specialist in Islamic studies. My specialty is in a social science called sociology. So it is together on this journey that we will explore some topics related to uh, Islam, to Islamic law, uh, to Sharia, to uh, Islamic thinking, to Islamic principles, uh, and we will work together to try to find what is best for our Ummah, for the worldwide Muslim uh, community, which all of us are a part of, no matter where we are in the world. Furthermore, I want to uh, mention that uh, uh, since all of you come from a variety of backgrounds that are fascinating and interesting and amazing, uh, we would like to uh, hear from you uh, as we go along in our classes uh, what uh, is in your own culture, in your own background, in your own Islamic training, uh, in your own uh, learning experience, whether in, excuse me, the Islamic sciences or the human sciences, both are extremely important uh, and both are uh, part of our uh, worldview, although our focus, uh, if we are believing Muslims, is to satisfy our Creator and do uh, as much as we can to uh, be able to earn uh, the great uh, blessing of entering into al furdos into entering heaven by following and pleasing uh, the Creator and trying to make our lives and the lives of those around us uh, peaceful and uh, healthy uh, and uh, spiritual uh, and full of uh, the love and the mercy required to make our lives better, and our families better, uh, and our neighbors better, and our societies better, and the environment uh, a much better place for us to live. Regarding the assessment for this class, uh, this class is uh, based upon four assignments, uh, and also attendance, and a short research paper. So each assignment is worth 10% of your final mark of your grades, so four assignments, that means 40%. And then attendance is worth 10% of your final mark. And then the short research paper is worth 50% of your final mark. So that is 100%. And I will uh, work with you and inform you about e each of these as we go along. But my advice is to do it right away, uh, because for the assignments, it is a one-week time period. Uh, and for the final research paper, we will start early, uh, around mid-semester, and then uh, you will have uh, until the last day of this class 
in August uh, to uh, submit the final research paper, but it's better to submit it early uh, and to uh, have it done quickly so that it is not a big burden at the end of the course. Any questions about anything we have uh, raised so far? Everything clear? Uh, Brother Zikri, you are joining us uh, from which country? <coughs> uh, Tofiq, you are joining us from which country? Ah, Zikri from Indonesia, very good. Uh, Rafiq, uh, where where are you joining us from? Rezida, where are you joining us from? Ah, Tofiq from Lagos, Nigeria, very good. And Rezida? Germany. From Germany. Wonderful. Das ist sehr gut. Thank you for joining us. And uh, Rafiq, you are joining us from India. And Bashiru, where are you joining us from? From Lagos. Also from Lagos, Lagos Nigeria. Nigeria. Wonderful. That Thank you so much. <laughs> well, <laughs> <for> me, <yeah. laughs> yeah. Your class was very interesting class. Alhamdulillah that I joined. <laughs> we are together this time around. <laughs> so well, I'll continue. Uh, Thank you very much. Bashir, you have taken some of my classes before, and I'm very proud that you and some other students Alhamdulillah. are taking uh, again uh, a class with me. Yes, Alhamdulillah. I, 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 I hope that I'm going to gain a lot of uh, weight of experience, like... Uh, uh, anthropology, Islamic anthropology, you know, that course was very interesting. It, it had more to my knowledge. You know, I was thinking anthropology something before, but through that class, I got to know what anthropology is all about. I really enjoy your class, your, 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 your language, you speak a, 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 a clear language. I don't have problem in listening to you. I don't have problem. <laughs> so that makes your class very interesting to me. Alhamdulillah, I know I'm registering for two courses this time around, a jihad, okay, and then the sociology. So I want to see what is sociology, Islamic sociology going to give to me again. <laughs> Thank you. May Allah bless you, Bashiru. Uh, you have been one of the most active uh, and most involved students in my previous classes, and I appreciate that. Uh, and uh, yes, I did teach anthropology of Islam in the past, uh, hopefully in the future they will offer it again. Uh, I would be honored uh, to teach it. Uh, and uh, in addition to this Ijtihad class this trimester, I'm also teaching sociology of the family on Fridays, and I am teaching uh, sociology of religion and culture on Sundays. So even though you may be registered for this class, uh, you are more than welcome to uh, join the same link. It is the same Google Meet link for uh, my other classes. And also to encourage for this class and any of my class, uh, you and your spouse, your uh, husband or wife, your children, uh, your relatives, your neighbors, your friends, anybody to come and also uh, join in our class. Uh, everybody is open whether they want to participate or not to participate. But uh, my hope, my dream, my goal, uh, if uh, Allah gives me the uh, power and the ability, is to share as much as possible uh, and to uh, benefit as many people as uh, possible as I can. I don't believe that knowledge should be restricted. I don't believe that knowledge should be limited. I don't believe that knowledge should be only for rich people who can pay money. I don't believe that knowledge should only be for the powerful and the elites and the uh, uh, people who uh, are uh, controlling things. I think knowledge should be for everybody. 
simple, easy, accessible. And I am very proud of IKI Academy, uh, which I joined from uh, the very beginning when they started two years ago, uh, that all the courses are uh, free and available. Uh, and uh, now they are available in English and some of them in Russian. But I hope in the future, with your uh, help and support uh, and encouragement, we will have the courses in other languages as well, so that there will be more benefit. And also, I uh, am uh, providing all my lectures on YouTube for free, uh, open to anybody, so that uh, as many people as possible can benefit uh, from around the world. Uh, I think that is a great blessing. Uh, regarding the uh, different uh, <coughs> activities that we will have in class, everything will be announced through the Telegram group. So uh, all of you are already in our Ijtihad Renewal and Modernity Telegram group. Uh, as you already noticed, where I put the uh, assignments uh, and I put the uh, information. Uh, and if you have any questions, you can ask them through the Telegram group or ask me directly through my uh, Telegram account. Uh, that is our means of communication. Of course, it is in addition to the uh, LMS, the Learning Management System, Class E365, where uh, from now time to time I might post uh, the same announcements or uh, the same documents uh, that I post on the uh, telegram uh, group. So make sure you continue to follow along in the telegram group uh, and to be aware uh, of whatever we are doing in class so that nobody uh, is uh, left behind. Now, <coughs> uh, telegram has its limitations uh, and it's not a perfect program, but uh, IKI Academy has chosen to use it uh, and I hope uh, everybody will uh, benefit from it as much as possible. If you have any issue or concern or difficulty uh, or will not be able to attend or to submit something, uh, just send me a direct message through Telegram personally, privately, uh, and I look forward to responding uh, and for us to work together. My job is not to make your life harder. Uh, my job is not to give you difficulty. My job is to share with you what I know, what I have learned, what I have experienced, uh, the books I have read, the important uh, topics and thoughts uh, that uh, may help us and may help the Ummah become better. So I am uh, a source for you to make your life uh, better, not to make your life uh, miserable. Uh, that is why I am here to work with you, not to work against you. And I realize that some of us may have uh, some uh, ease in our life and time and uh, some resources. Others may go through periods uh, where our time is limited or we have sudden commitments or something comes up. Just let me know uh, and uh, I will work with you to make sure that you get the highest uh, and uh, most uh, uh, prominent, uh, the best marks in this class, inshallah, uh, that is our goal. If there is anything I say or anything in the assignment that is not clear, you just ask me. Uh, I, I, um, I'm happy to elaborate and to explain and to correct myself because, of course, I'm a human being. I make mistakes. We are all human beings and we learn from our mistakes and we improve. If you do not tell me something that needs to be corrected, then I will continue making the same mistake, which is not a good thing. We all want to be better. And uh, as I explained in my classes, we have two, uh, many important principles in Islam, but two of the most important are itqan and ihsan. Uh, and many of you uh, may have heard of these, so I will write it down. Itqan, which means excellence, and then Ihsan, which means improvement. So the uh, Arabic word 
Uh, Hassan, for example, which is also sometimes used as a name, if you remember that um, uh, Sayyidina Ali radiallahu anhu, uh, the second, uh, the fourth Khalifa, had a grandson. His name was Hassan. Uh, Hassan means uh, good, uh, positive. Uh, and so the word Ihsan has the same root, improvement, making something good even better. Something not good, making it good. Something good, making it better. Something better, making it uh, at a higher level. And our goal is to reach itqam, is to reach excellence. We can never be 100% excellent. Only our Creator is 100% excellent. But our Creator tells us, strive work, uh, do what you can, uh, exert yourself, uh, push yourself, uh, do hard work to try to reach excellence. We may be at a certain level, which may be okay or not okay, uh, but in the eyes of our Creator, this level is something to begin from, not to accept and to uh, stay at or, uh, God forbid, go under. So in that sense, uh, Islamic theology, Islamic ideology, Islamic thought uh, can be uh, different from old Catholic thought, not the modern Catholic Church, but the old Catholic Church in what's called the Dark Ages, the Medieval Ages, when Europe was in the worst shape, uh, while Islamic civilization was at its highest level, Europe, uh, many Europeans were suffering from the worst situation uh, that they had, killing each other, wars, disease, uh, torture, uh, horrible injustice. So one of the problems uh, that existed was uh, that, according to some scholars, the Catholic Church would tell the Catholics, the poor Catholics, uh, usually farmers, peasants, uh, people raising their food on a small area of land, uh, they were told, it's okay to stay that way. All you have to care about is to get into heaven. And how do you get into heaven? You pay money to the Catholic Church, and don't worry about improving yourself. Don't try to get rich. Don't try to get powerful. Don't try to improve your situation in life. Stay where you are. Just make sure that you give continuously to the Catholic Church, and that will send you to heaven. Of course, the Catholic Church has changed uh, since that time. Uh, but you know, you have uh, sent us, uh, Yes, absolutely. So when you work hard, uh, our Creator Allah will give you guidance. If you don't work hard, if you don't try to get better, then uh, how will you get guidance from Allah? You have to be doing things in order for Allah to guide you. If you are not doing anything, then how can there be guidance from our Creator, guidance from Allah? And that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, says that, uh, 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 Those who are guided by Allah uh, cannot be misguided by others. And those who follow misguidance will not uh, be guided. So we want to avoid misguidance. We want to avoid the wrong path. We want to avoid the negative things. And we want to get better, strive toward the positive things, get the blessing and the guidance from Allah, which requires what? Which requires hard work from us. Anything good will take time and money and effort. Anything bad is cheap and easy and fast. This is one of the rules of our Creator on this earth for a human life. Uh, one of the facts that we are aware of as thinking human beings is regardless of your religion, whether you are Muslim or non-Muslim, if you want to uh, engage in destruction, if you want to do bad things, uh, if you want to uh, be negative, it will be cheap and easy and quick. So, for example, uh, if you are not feeling well, uh, if you are bored, uh, if you are feeling miserable, you want to solve the problem cheap, easy, quick, 
And then you take a cigarette or some kind of drug, and it will make you feel better. Quick, easy, cheap. Even sometimes it's not cheap, but it's quick, easy, just to take the illegal drug. But as we know, this will destroy our body, destroy our mind, and make our creator upset, and it is not acceptable. If we want to be healthy, if we want to get closer to Allah, if we want to be happy, we have to spend time and money and effort on spiritual improvement, on prayer, on fasting, uh, on uh, paying the poor do zakat, and also on uh, taking care of our bodies and taking care of our families and having a good uh, community life and having a good spiritual life and having a good physical life and medical life. It is extremely hard. Being successful is extremely hard in anything. But it is the only true path. That is why we keep repeating uh, the Surah Al-Fatiha, right? Every time we pray five times a day, in every rak'ah, we say Surah Al-Fatiha. And what is one of the most important concepts in Surah Al-Fatiha? Ihdina sirat al-mustaqim, guide us to the straight path. The path of those you have given uh, blessing uh, and bounties. Not the path of those you have uh, become upset with. And not those who are misguided. So what is Allah talking about when Allah talks about those who are misguided? The people who want a quick fix, a quick solution, cheap, easy, fast. That will lead you to misguidance because it will not solve the problem. In fact, it will make things worse. If you want to be on the path of those who are rightly guided by our Creator, in my humble opinion, my understanding of Surah Al-Fatiha, it will take time and money and effort just like you are taking courses at IKI Academy. This is taking time from you, taking effort from you, uh, and also preventing you from engaging in other activities that may be uh, more um, money-making or uh, more profitable. But the pursuit of knowledge is something uh, that is a part of Islamic civilization that made Islamic civilization great and that is worth sacrificing for. Ignorance, unfortunately, uh, hurts us and does not help us. And here I want to emphasize that uh, I am only a human being, like I said before. So I know some things I am ignorant about other things. And what I share with you in this class is my opinion. Unless I say it is a verse from Allah or a, a valid hadith of the Prophet, this is my opinion. Even if I say a verse, it is my interpretation of the verse. Uh, and this is one of the things that leads to disputes in the ummah we all agree that the quran is from allah and it has uh, been preserved the problem is not the text of the quran we know the words are there and the verses are there uh, the ayat and the surah they are there and all of us read the same quran the problem is our interpretation of the quran some things we agree upon some things we don't agree upon so in this class, this is what we will discuss. When there is agreement, alhamdulillah, then it becomes an issue of how do we uh, try to encourage uh, other Muslims to follow the Quran now that we have agreed upon it. But when there is disagreement, then the question becomes how do we assess, how do we evaluate, how do we come up with a conclusion about what to do when there is a disagreement and there are a lot of disagreements uh, about what the quran says uh, especially when we start looking at the problem of extremism in our ummah uh, and the problem of narrow-minded thinking uh, and the problem of terrorism uh, and the problem of uh, takfir uh, calling people uh, rejectors of the faith uh, and the problem of uh, idolatry associating with allah shirk how these ideas uh, have influenced some Muslims uh, and created friction with other Muslims is one of the topics for uh, this class. 
Okay. <clears throat> now, um, the other two classes uh, I am teaching are Islam and family institutions uh, and sociology of religion and culture. And there is a lot of overlap between uh, the topics we are discussing in my three classes. So anything we discuss in this class that has to do with a better understanding of our religion, of Islam, of renewing uh, our uh, tradition, uh, will impact how we raise our children. Because as we know, I don't need to say this, as parents, it is our job to explain uh, and to uh, bring a proper understanding of Islam to our children. But what does that mean? It means we have to first have uh, an understanding of Islam, and then we can convey it to our children. But if we ourselves are confused or misled uh, or unsure uh, or weak in our understanding, then we can't, we, we can't uh, 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 convey that to our children. And that's a serious problem with uh, bringing up children. So I know all of your parents have done a great job bringing you up. And we thank Allah for that. And we uh, ask Allah to bless our parents and to reward them for the time and effort uh, and money uh, and difficulties they faced in raising us. Uh, this is something uh, that is a miracle from Allah. Not everybody uh, has had the opportunity to have uh, a dedicated mother and father raising them. As you know, there are millions of orphans uh, in the Muslim world, uh, either no mother or no father or no parents at all. Uh, and uh, may God help them. Uh, who is going to teach them? Who is going to love them? Who is going to support them? Who is going to raise them? Uh, this is not just a, a Muslim problem. This is a non-Muslim problem. It's a global problem. Uh, and we suffer in our communities and in other communities uh, from this uh, very issue. Uh, so not only should we thank Allah for the blessing of our parents, but also for the knowledge and understanding they have given us. But in some cases, the parents, uh, their own knowledge of Islam uh, may not be very deep. It may be based upon uh, a few things that they may have learned from our grandparents. Uh, and so the transmission uh, may be uh, incomplete or weaker. So for example, uh, many of my relatives, they learned Islam as something very simple, uh, restricted to the five rituals, uh, the prayer, the fasting, uh, giving zakat, maybe they went on Umrah, uh, the uh, visit to uh, Mecca uh, and uh, doing uh, the tawaf uh, around the Kaaba and the Sa'i, the travel between Safa and Marwa. But that's it. Their understanding of Islam beyond that uh, either is very primitive or not existent or uh, limited. I'm not criticizing them. I'm just saying some of us get a lot of Islamic understanding from our parents, uh, from our teachers, from our scholars, and it's very deep and very uh, widespread, uh, I mean, wide ranging. And others, not their fault, they get uh, limited exposure to uh, Islamic ideas and Islamic thought. And some of the people who are Muslims, but their understanding of Islam is limited, may get recruited into either terrorist group, astaghfirullah, or simply leave Islam. They're just Muslim by name. Of course, this is not just uh, Islam. All religions face this problem. But uh, given our concern about Islam and Muslims, it is a big concern for us when Muslims don't understand Islam, either because some of them become, on the one end, extremists, or on the other end, rejectors. They hardly do anything that has uh, to do with Islam. Uh, and you ask them, are you Muslim? They may say yes. But do they read the Quran? Probably not. Uh, do they do the rituals? Probably not. Uh, do they care about the Muslim community? Probably not. We're not here to judge them, of course, uh, but it's our job to help them. Uh, and and so so in the family class, we talk about the, how would the parents do this with their kids. Hopefully, they will do a good job. And then in the sociology of religion and culture class, uh, we talk about how our societies or any society affects religion, 
whether it's them or something else. And then Islam affects the society. Same thing with the culture. Uh, Islam affects the culture and the culture affects Islam. So when we talk about culture, we talk about what we eat, what we wear, what we do for entertainment, uh, how we uh, have fun, how we uh, engage in uh, funerals, uh, how we do weddings, all that is culture. And then you have Islam, the religion, which has the five uh, rituals and which tells you how to live your life. Sometimes the culture and the religion are compatible. They are in agreement. Sometimes they are incompatible. So, for example, in my original culture in Mosul, Iraq, the culture is your son or your daughter who is from Mosul marries only somebody from another family in Mosul. They don't let you marry somebody from another city, from, from another uh, country, from another uh, civilization, from another uh, background. And also, uh, there is racism. So people from Mosul who have a whiter color like myself, they do not let their children marry people from a darker culture. And this is racism. In English, the word is racist, racism. Now, this is their culture. Is this in agreement with Islam? I think you all agree with me that this is against Islam. Islam doesn't prevent you from marrying anybody. It should be based upon faith, not upon which city you are from, which uh, language you speak. And also, as we know, Islam is against racism. Racism is haram in Islam, even though, unfortunately, many Muslims practice it. Many Muslims are brought up in uh, some racist cultures. And I speak for myself as an Arab. Many Arabs are very good and love everybody and do not discriminate on skin color but many arabs are racist some of them extremely racist and i'm very sad to say this and i apologize uh, on behalf of uh, those arabs who uh, discriminate on the basis of color uh, and they may not use the word uh, black in uh, uh, iraqi culture we use the word uh, tan, uh, asma, uh, dark, uh, but they mean the same thing. When they ask uh, if somebody got married, oh yes, they got married. Uh, describe this person. Oh, they're very dark. And they say, oh, sorry. You see, this, this is racism. Unacceptable. Uh, and yet it exists. And these are Muslims. These are people who pray and fast and pay zakat uh, and maybe have gone to Hajj or Umrah. How do we explain that? How do we understand this contradiction? So what we try to do in this class uh, as much as possible is first we find out what is the current situation? What is going on in the Muslim Ummah? Is there racism? Is there sexism? Is there discrimination? Uh, is there hatred? Uh, is there destruction? Is there violence? Okay, we look at the uh, positive things and the negative things. Then we say, okay, why is that? Why is this going on? Why are Muslims killing other Muslims? Why are Muslims hurting other Muslims? Why are Muslims racist toward other Muslims? Why are Muslims uh, who should be knowledgeable uh, are ignorant? Why are Muslims uh, spreading bad ideas in some cases? Why are Muslims uh, engaging in uh, dictatorship and injustice. Okay, so we ask these questions. First, we find out the is, what is the situation, then we ask why. Uh, loss of adab, yes, Rafiq, absolutely. Uh, extremely important, right? Uh, moral virtue, a good behavior. Many of us are good uh, and moral and virtuous and do what is right and try to follow the truth, but some of us, we have lost uh this uh moral virtue in fact the word adab in arabic captures so many things uh you see in the past and i will make a, a little digression here in english we use the word teacher a person who transfers knowledge so your parents can be teachers your relatives can be teachers your neighbors can be teachers 
uh, the elders of your tribe can be teachers. The uh, <coughs> people uh, in charge of the masjid, the imam can be a teacher, right? Many people can be a teacher. A teacher meaning transfers knowledge. But the Arabic equivalent for teacher is mudarris uh, or ustad or muallim. Okay? That is what teacher is. But Arabic also has a word adab. And adab is transferred through a mu'addib. Now, a mu'addib is like a teacher, but is much more than a teacher. You see, a teacher is concerned with giving you knowledge, giving you data, giving you information. But a mu'addib, in addition to doing that, also cares about your behavior, your morals, your virtues, your goodness, your conscience, your soul. You see, it is a much wider concept, and I'm very happy uh, that you uh, brought this up. So if you are misbehaving, meaning if you don't respect your elders, if you use bad words, uh, if you uh, don't uh, open the door for others, uh, if you uh, don't wait uh, to eat before uh, those who are uh, senior to you uh, uh, start eating, uh, if you don't line up properly in prayer, right? All these little behaviors that show goodness and respect and harmony. Uh, see, this is called adab, proper behavior. And some Muslims, alhamdulillah, are doing proper behavior. Many Muslims are not. And it's not just Muslims. Non-Muslims also have this problem. But here we are concerned about Muslims. And the question is why? Why have some Muslims lost their adab? They lost, uh, they no longer respect uh, their wives or their husbands. They no, no longer and fathers. I think there is some issue with the connection here. I'm sorry. Uh, there is, uh, I don't know if you can still hear me, uh, but my video has uh, frozen. Uh, so I apologize. Okay, I think we are back now. Uh, so, so adab, proper behavior, is an extremely important part of Islamic civilization, an important part of our class. And it is my job as a teacher to show the proper adab, uh, the good behavior toward you, my students. It is a big responsibility. Uh, it is uh, something I will be held accountable for. And then the students show the proper adab uh, toward their teacher. So I already explained earlier in this class that uh, the proper adab in my class is I want you to ask questions, I want you to share, and I want you to criticize, and I want you to help me improve. And inshallah, I will uh, do the same thing with you. Uh, unless something uh, affects you personally, you let me know, and I will make sure that I will exhibit the proper behavior. Any questions, uh, thoughts, concerns uh, up to this point? Zikri, how do you say uh, teacher in uh, Bahasa Indonesia? Guru. Yes. And uh, Rafiq, how do you say teacher in uh, India? Adhyabagan. Excellent. Very good. Uh, maybe if you uh, can also, turn it down. Uh -huh. Also, Guru is another synonym for teacher in Malayalam. Guru. Ah, uh, Guru also, yes. Uh, because Guru yeah. is, I think, uh, from Sanskrit origin, which uh, got... Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is, uh, it is a Sanskrit origin. So many Wonderful. words also derived from Malay uh, Sanskrit language in Malayalam. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, Rezida, uh, how uh, is uh, Guru said in uh, your language, uh, teacher? Uh, how is it said? Level in, in German, yes. 
Uh, so in German language, uh, I think uh, uh, it is very important, uh, the teaching tradition uh, in Germany. Uh, Germany was the uh, strongest civilization in Europe for a long time. Uh, and uh, it transferred massive amounts uh, of human knowledge uh, through the German uh, Empire and the Austro-Hungarian Empire uh, in uh, different uh, points uh, in history. Uh, and uh, we are all uh, much better as human beings due to the many positive things that uh, German civilization uh, has provided uh, to the world. And unfortunately, some things uh, were negative, which we hope that uh, we will not uh, repeat. Uh, Tawfiq, uh, the word for teacher in uh, your language. Uh, Bashiru. I think our brothers in Nigeria uh, may have some uh, lag in uh, response. So the idea of a teacher is very important. And then we can add to that the concept of uh, the comprehensive uh, shaper, the mu'addib, right? Transferring knowledge and also transferring uh, good morals and uh, proper behavior. Uh, and caring not just about what you know, but what is in your heart and how you behave, right? So the modern Western conception uh, of education, which has its advantages uh, and disadvantages, is extremely focused on knowledge. The Islamic uh, conception uh, included uh, knowledge and uh, character, uh, behavior. Uh, the uh, issues related to conscience, uh, the issues related to goodness, morality. Okay, there are so many different words for it. Uh, now, what was the effect of that? You see, if a teacher only is concerned about the different bits of data and information and knowledge transferred to you, then you may become knowledgeable. Inshallah, hopefully everybody who is a student gets knowledge. But does that make you a good person? It's two different things, right? Being Assalamu alaikum. I hope all of you can hear me. I had to switch from my computer to my phone. Okay. Yes, Anda, we, yes, can yes, we, can we can hear you. you. We can hear you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I um, am uh, not sure what is going on with my uh, computer with Google Meet. 
Uh, so uh, uh, I, I do uh, extend my uh, uh, apologies for this. Um, so let me end this class by saying that the education in uh, Islamic civilization uh, was uh, a key factor in making Muslims the biggest, strongest, smartest, uh, most amazing civilization on earth in the past. So there are many factors, beginning with the blessing of our Creator and uh, having access to resources and uh, to uh, uh, the uh, different uh, uh, war fighting abil abilities. But the key to the greatness of Islamic civilization revolves around education. And what made this education so great in Islamic civilization, we said that it combined knowledge with adab, with good character, with good behavior. Uh, and, oh, Brother Rafiq uh, is mentioning knowledge in Islam uh, by uh, the author Rosenthal. So thank you, Rafiq. I urge everybody to take a look at this book uh, when they have a chance. So uh, knowledge is transferred through books. Good character, adab, morality cannot be transferred through books. Okay? It can be talked about in books. But when we want to instill in our children, in our students, uh, in our uh, society, uh, good behavior, good morals, good conscience, uh, love, peace, harmony, then we need to go beyond books. We cannot rely just on books. We have to rely on good examples. We have to rely on the scripture, the Quran. We have to rely on the uh, great and amazing and miraculous uh, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, the greatest human being. Uh, and so it is a much harder process in some senses. But this was key to Islamic civilization, both knowledge and good character, good behavior, good adab. This has been lost in the modern age. So when we talk about ijtihad, renewal, and modernity, what modernity has done, it has focused on the knowledge part, which is very good in many ways, but has had less success with the good behavior, good morals, uh, good adab part. And this is something we, that we have to uh, re-emphasize, and it is part of our renewal process. When we say uh, ijtihad, renewal, and modernity, then this is what we mean uh, by renewal in education. Renewing not just the part about conveying knowledge, but also pro uh, conveying good character. So I can tell you a lot of facts. I can give you a lot of bits of data and information and knowledge. And that can be very good and it's important and valid. But what I also have a job as a teacher is to encapsulate and uh, be a conveyor of adab, of good character, good morals, uh, good uh, conscience. And this is much, much, much harder than the conveying of information, which is why most teachers are not trained for that, uh, and most teacher teachers don't know how to do it, or uh, are not uh, as interested or willing to do it, because it takes a lot more time, effort, money. So we have 12 weeks together. This is the first week. This is the first class. We have 11 more classes. And I look forward to sharing with you uh, as much knowledge, information, uh, and data that I can. Uh, and I welcome uh, Galia to our class. So welcome to our class, Galia. Uh, but I also want to work with you uh, to show how, uh, in our Ijtihad Renewal and Modernity class, we can also convey encapsulate uh, and represent the adab, the good morals, uh, the good character, the good behavior, so that we can then uh, be conduits, uh, we can then uh, be vessels, we can then be examples for others in order to uh, adopt 
the necessity of adab, of good morals, uh, in all our dealings, especially in uh, education. So uh, I uh, am ready to end the class here. Any questions, any ideas, any comments uh, at this point? Uh, how to teach, uh, Zikri is mentioning, how to teach our generation not to bully others. Ah, thank you so much, Zikri. Uh, this is extremely important. You see, uh, what has happened throughout the world, the Muslim world and the non-Muslim world, is that we have this uh, problem uh, called bullying, uh, hurting, uh, hitting, uh, being violent uh, between students, from one student to another, or even from uh, an adult to uh, a youngster, or even between adults, somebody who's stronger is uh, hurting and doing injustice to somebody who is younger. So in English, they use the word uh, bully, B-U-L-L-Y. Essentially, it means uh, a uh, person who uh, does uh, violence toward uh, a weaker person. Uh, so uh, hopefully, uh, we can raise this issue in the upcoming classes. But what I can mention here is, uh, so this is the issue of violence. Our civilization, when it was the strongest civilization on earth, was the most loving and peaceful civilization. Our civilization now, which is one of the weakest civilization on earth, is one of the most violent and hurtful and hateful civilizations. And this is where uh renewal comes in we have to renew or uh the goal of many islamic scholars and activists is to renew islamic civilization so that we get away from the violence and the uh, hurtful and the injustice behavior in unjust behaviors and we uh recreate our civilization uh, that in my opinion again is based upon peace and love and support and care uh, and justice and of course uh, as we can talk about it in the future it starts with the children with the parents and then with the schools and the masjid uh, and uh, the neighborhood uh, and society uh, Tawfiq, uh, you are agreeing yes islamic civilization must be renewed so there's a lot of talk about the renewal of the of islamic civilization and many people may agree with it including all of us in this class. But the key question is, how? How do we renew Islamic civilization? Let's assume we all are uh, in, in agreement, we want to do this, uh, but then the question is how? Where do we start? What institutions do we focus on? Uh, how do we uh, arrange uh, our lives uh, and our activities so that uh, we become part of the process of renewing Islamic civilization. Because if we accept the weak Islamic civilization that is today, if we uh, are willing to let the status quo continue, if we do not uh, practice ihsan and itqan, uh, excellence and renew uh, and improvement in our current civilization, then probably, uh, according to God's plan, we may just stay stagnant or even get worse. And that's why renewal is so important and so uh, essential. So in the coming classes, we will talk about how we will uh, and how uh, different groups are trying to renew Islamic civilization, which includes many things such as getting rid of violence uh, and replacing it with peace and harmony. Anybody else uh, have any question or comment or thought uh, or additions? Okay, I'm so happy that all of you have uh, joined uh, and I look forward to seeing you uh, next week and in the upcoming classes uh, and I wish you uh, the best uh, and inshallah uh, you will be successful in everything in your life uh, and in this class and in uh, all uh, other aspects uh, and uh, you are most welcome uh, to get uh, as much help as you can from me and from IKI Academy. We are here to serve you. We are here to help you. We are here to uh, be part of your success, inshallah. Thank you very much. May Allah bless you. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.
Amin ya Rabbil Alamin. Thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you very much. Bye. Continue. See you next.